Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 1v1 Warhammer battle. This is going to be the Undead versus Empire. A classic matchup, bringing Vlad von Karstein for this one. So the front line here, we have a total of three skeletons, one in this flank, two over here, one of which is going to be the um, Konigstein, I always mispronounce that, the Stalkers, they come with the poison damage, they have higher armor. They're a pretty cool unit. I like poison damage, so we put them in here. We also have a multiple grave guards. We have two grave guards with great weapons here and here. And then we have three normal grave guard here, here, and then the renowned version with the Sternsman, where we also have Vlad von Karstein and his um, bodyguard of the White King. Now, while Heinrich Kimmler, I believe, needs all the help he can get, which is why I bring Ray's Dead with him, Vlad von Karstein is a very solid leader as it is, so I did not bring the raised dead spell he only has invocation of the heck and von heels dance macabre because again i i kind of find raised dead to be a little on the strong side so i try not to bring it when i don't need to and i don't think vlad von karstein necessarily needs it and then over here in a vanguard deployment and also hiding and being super sneaky we have two dire wolves which i picked just to try and kill skirmishers of the empire which there are going to be a couple speaking oh also the claw and the gash and a puppy i usually bring two puppies but i wanted to bring the claw and the gash for this one so i opted to only bring one that's why I only have one puppy there. Uh, but yeah, for the Empire right here, we have two Demigriff Knights with Halberds, one of which is the Royal Altar of Griffites. They are being led by Boris uh, Toddbringer. We have a Silver Bullets, a front line of Spearmen, two Crossbows, two Flagellants, and then two Great Swords, a Light Wizard with the Net Spell, and the... I forget what that spell is called because I never use it. It's the Buff Spell. There you go. Briona's Time Warp. I, I never really use it, but they have that spell as well. Um, so it's kind of a good thing I maybe didn't bring two puppies, because with two Demigriff Knights with Halberds rolling around the battlefield, it would be kind of hard to protect two puppies against them. So you can see I'm kind of trying to keep the puppy on this side of the battlefield, as uh, far away from these guys as possible. I'm going to be sneaking out the Dire Wolves through this forest for a little bit, and then we're going to, I believe, pop out right here and run over here. And again, they are going to be on uh, Skirmisher duty, and then also killing routing units is why I brought them. Obviously, I have no cav of my own, and I don't want them to get engaged with the Demigriff Knights, because the Knights will destroy them instantaneously. Uh, here's where we actually see the Silver Bullets, and they're going to start opening fire on my Claw of Nagash, so I'm going to start pulling it over this way. Uh, crossbows are firing on, I believe, just Vladimir Karstein because he was the first target, and these are going to be firing into the Konstein Stalkers. Uh, but they do have shields so they can absorb some of the fire from the crossbows, and they also have higher armor than normal skeletons, so they can also just kind of weather the fire for a little bit. Meanwhile, the Demigriff Knight is going to get pulled in behind me. There's not much I can do about that. I have no, you know, cav units to stop them, so we're just going to barrel through. Going to get these skeleton warriors on the flank. We want to try and envelop them as much as possible. Grave Guard are going to go here. Skeletons, and I'm sorry, these Grave Guard, and then these skeletons are going to go around as well. Um, Main fight's going to start, so we have Vlad von Karstein and his bodyguard, the White King, going against the Spearmen, along with the backing of a multiple Graveguard units, so these Spearmen do not have a chance in hell uh, to withstand that amount of damage. These Flagellants are going after my Graveguard with great weapons, but I want them to engage against these great swords, so I'm actually pulling them out, and I'm going to try and stop them with these Graveguard, pull these Graveguard around with the great weapons to deal with the um, great swords, along with the Skeletal Warriors. You can see we're going to get hit with a net, which is going to get my Claw of Nagash, which is still being hit by the Silver Bullets, so I'm going to run the puppy right through the front lines to get into the Silver Bullets to shut them down, but you see that Boris Topbringer is going to come down and start dealing a massive amount of damage to the puppy like really quickly i was not expecting it to be that fast um i think i even cast master yeah i even did master of beguilement and boris Topbringer almost killed the puppy instantaneously so i have to pull him out really quickly this is when the direwolves is going to come in for their attack on the silver bullets and these crossbowmen meanwhile the front line the spearmen are holding kind of well but they will eventually fall over here one of my grave guard or i'm sorry my skeletons are getting in combat with the flagellants now the demi is going to be coming behind my lines uh, but you can see we are dealing with all the skirmishers for the most part because we broke through the first um, line of spearmen here with vlad von karstein and his bodyguards of the grave guard and the white king and now i'm going to try and get them on boris Tobringer, the white King has popped all of his um, bonuses. He, has, he is a pretty decent hero killer, the White King is. Guinea Vlad von Karstein over here, and I'm trying to keep Boris Topringer down the Dire Wolves, and then also the Puppy. Puppy's going to take a lot of damage, so we're going to cast Invocation of the Heck on this entire area as we try to kill Boris Topringer. Uh, another neck dropping on my Dire Wolves, Multi Grave Guard over here. You can see we dealt some damage to these Great Swords, but they are going to be getting a lot of kills on our Dire Wolves right here because they cannot move. Um, let me actually slow this down because kind of a lot is happening. So back here we have a Demigriff Knight unit engaged with my Grave Guard. I actually charged the Demigriff Knight unit because I don't have much to stop them and I don't want them getting on my Claw of Nagash or um, my Vargulf. So I'm throwing Grave Guard great weapons over here and then the other um, ones are over here on my uh, Vlad von Karstein. That's where the second group is. Dire Wolves are um, going to be pulled out of this fight against the Great Swords here soon. Second group of Dire Wolves are still chasing off these crossbows and then they are going to be going off into these crossbowmen uh, eventually. Boris Topbringer is going to temporarily route, but he will be back. And now we are dealing with these Demigriff Knights with Vlad von Karstein and the White King, which is totally okay. 
the, the Royal Outdoor Crit Fights are a very strong unit, but fighting these two heroes, and well, Legendary Lord and the Hero, is not really the battle they want. I'm keeping the puppy away from them, and I use just currently healing up with another Invocation of Heck, because this player has really wanted to kill the puppy. And for good reason, because the puppy is really good. Um, so I'm trying to keep it protected with all, within all of these Grave Guard. We're going to have, um, I believe the Skeleton Warriors hold off these great, or these great Swords for a little bit, and then we're going to shift these um, Grave Guard Great Weapons over there. You can see the Royal Outdoor Crit Fights are going to try and stop our Dire Wolves. I'm trying to pull them out. Meanwhile, the second group of Dire Wolves is now coming over here against those crossbows that I told you about earlier. Boris Topringer coming back down on the puppy. Like, they really want him dead. So I'm going to have to try and pull the puppy out. Uh, once again, I'm getting the Claw and the Gash over here to deal some AOB damage and terror and fear. I, actually, are they even... Yeah, they're not immune to terror because they don't exert it. Um... Anyway, uh, Claw Nagash is going over here. We're going to get a massive net again as I was trying to run the puppy away from Boris Topringer. And I'm like, shit, that's not good for me. Um, so these Royal Doctor Griffiths are going to come in here. They're actually going to finish the Vargolf once and on for all. Um, the focus is down to the point where I can't heal the Vargolf anymore. Like, my invocation spell is down. We're netted. I can't move. I can't live in support. So the puppy is actually going to die, much to my sadness. Uh, but meanwhile, over here, we're chasing off the second group of crosswomen. They are about to route for good. And we are back on the Royal Auto of Griffiths with our hero squad. Uh, Vlad von Karstein and the Viking are doing a massive amount of damage to them with support of the Grave Guard with great weapons. And then the... Um this is when the Claw Nagash is going to be charged into the Great Swords and the Spearman over here, and the Fear and Terror are going to hit them. And now that they are routing, we're going to chase them with the Skeletal Warriors so they will not come back from routing. We're just going to be perpetually routing unless I stop chasing them. Um, over here, you can see a mass route from the Spearman and the Light Wizard who were engaged with the East Grave Guard and the Sternsman over here, which they did not have much of a chance of fighting. And now we are routing off the Roll of Dwarf Griffites, and this is going to be a massive chain route, leaving only the Flagellants left to try and fend off the rest of our army. So the player did manage to focus down the Vargulf really well. Like, they definitely wanted the Vargulf dead, and they eventually did get the Vargulf down. I managed to micro him enough to keep him alive through most of the battle, but in the end, you know, getting netted and the roll off of Dwarf Griffites coming in, I couldn't, I couldn't save him. But, since they focused all their attention on the Vargulf, it allowed Vlad von Karstein, the White King, and the um, Claw and the Gash to just kind of go around and do what they do, and that is murder people. So, that's what they did. <laughs> um, but they did get the Vargulf. And now we're just finishing up the flagellants. Everyone's running over there as the rest of their army is currently routing. And I made sure to try and keep on my toes with my dire wolves because, again, they were the ones that were going to be chasing off routing units. And I stuck them on, I think, the great sword, maybe? And uh, definitely those two crosswomen. But I think I, I did miss a couple opportunities to finish off, like, spearmen that were routing with my dire wolves because I wasn't paying that much attention uh, to them at that point. But dire wolves make great units. They're very cheap. As long as you keep them away from Demigriff Knights, they can do their job of killing crosswomen, and they are just excellent um, route killers. As long as you keep a unit, like your own unit, next to an enemy unit that's in the routing status, and you don't let up, they will not get their morale back, and they will not come back from routing. So you can just chase important units off the field, or just murder them all with your dire wolves. They're super fast. It's hard to get away from them. And they're a very viable unit. I don't bring them that often, but they are a very viable unit. So good game to pit.com here. For the kills, Vlad von Karstein and the White King, they chewed through spearmen, then the silver bullets, and then they did a lot of damage to the Royal Altar of Griffites. So they did pretty well. And then a ton of damage to Boris Topringer as well. Because again, the White King, when you have all of his buffs, because he has that deadly onslaught, I think is what it's called. He is a pretty damn good hero killer. The Skeletal Warriors, I think, did really well. These things are 300, they only, and they got 55 kills off of Spearmen and some Flagellants. The Conestine Stalkers, 64 kills, did amazing. Usually they don't really do that well, but they did a really good job here. Graveguard, do what they do. They killed a bunch of infantry, and they dealt actually a lot of damage to both of the Demigriff Knights. I ran the Graveguard with great weapons into this group, I believe. Um, and they dealt, again, a lot of damage, uh, along with, you know, Vlad von Karstein and them. And you can see the Dire Wolves, 93 kills is a lot. This is probably the one that went after the two crossbow units, because this one, uh, actually got murdered by those great swords and then by the Griffites, but that's fine. They still got some decent amount of kills. The poor puppy didn't have much chance to really do much of anything, because he was focused down, but then the Call the Gash, you can see he got 27 kills, and, you know, it has that AoE damage aura that is always excluding, and it has fear and terror. It's a really good unit. Like, it's, it's really good. Um, for Pit.com here, Boris Topringer dealt tons of damage to uh, the poor Vargulf. The Light Wizard had a couple of really good net spells there and got 13 kills as well. The Spirit Line had zero chance against the line of Graveguard and these uh, Stalkers, but they held the line for a little while, um, considering what they are. Flagellants did really well. 111 kills in this group is amazing. The Grey Swords did really well, uh, but the Crossbows and the Silver Bullets, I just had too much pressure on them. Um, the, the Spearmen got crushed too fast. And so Vlad and his troops went in. They got crushed by the two dire wolves that came in behind. 
so I didn't really give them much chance to do anything because I you don't want them to because they will get you know tons of, of uh, kills on you. If these silver bullets were not harassed at all, my call on a gash probably would have fallen you know pretty quickly. And even though I was trying to run interference, did my best that I could to get units um, to kill these rollouts or griffites and these ones, they still dealt a lot of damage to me because they are you know demigriffites and they're super good. Uh, but overall, a good game with pit.com here. I wonder if that's an actual. Is that an actual, that's, that has to be an actual website. Pitta. I'm not going to check it. I advise you not to check it because who knows what the hell it is. But anyway, good game to them. I hope you enjoyed. And let's watch a cinematic view of Vlad versus uh, Boris Toddbringer. Just casually strolling. They let my front line get pretty close before they get pulled back too. I almost caught them with my grave guard. The flankers. Eh, maybe I didn't. It looked closer when I was actually battling. Never mind. I guess that's still a decent amount of distance. These poor spearmen, man. No chance against renowned skeletal units in the Grave Guard. So we have two Grave Guard over here, including the Sternsman, Viking, Vlavon, like that's just so much for a Spearman to, hold, to try and hold up, and they just break pretty quickly. And this is when, even with Master Beguilement on Boris, he is going to just destroy our puppy. I was shocked! Minus 46 melee attack is pretty big. He still just got crushed though. Lucky enough, we are going to get the support of the Dire Wolves here. Vlad von Karstein and the Viking just on Boris, just dealing so much damage. You see more spearmen breaking in the distance. And then come the Demigriffs. It was a good move on my opponent's part to pull them out of this fight with the um, Great Weapon Grave Guard. That's not who they want to be killing here. They want to be killing that call on the cash. You can see they get on him briefly. And that's scary. Because that call on the cash will fall. It's so quick. So you can see I'm trying to run it away. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Please. No, please. I believe that's the Nagash aura going down these soldiers right here. Then the net. Get him, puppy. Kill him. No. It fought like a warrior poet. The puppy did. He was a warrior poet. He wouldn't know, but he was. I have a car sign, man. I don't use him often. But he is he is a, a punk. 
And by Puck, I mean he's just really good. He has no mobility, which is his greatest weakness, obviously. But damn, he is such a strong combatant. I took one of his two legendary items, the one that gives him constant uh, regeneration. The second one gives him even more regeneration when he's below 20% HP, but I usually find that you don't actually need that one. In fact, you probably don't need the other legendary item to be truthful with this other regeneration that he has because of um, Blood Kiss? Is that what it's called? The vampire trait that regenerates the combat? Like, he has so much regeneration, it's disgusting. That's going to be it. Hope you enjoyed the battle, everybody. Vlad versus Boris. And I will see you all next time. Take care.